Good morning, you beautiful people. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. With season one, we now have a Battle Pass microtransaction DLC model. So how does it work? Is it the next best DLC model in Call of Duty? Let's talk about it. If you don't know how it works, I don't know where you've been, and I don't know why this is the first YouTube video you're seeing about it, but hey, I'll tell you, the regular Battle Pass comes with a hundred tiers. If you don't want to buy the Battle Pass, you're gonna get 20 free tiers, two of which include the new DLC weapons, so that's really nice. But there is also a premium battle pass, which is just the normal battle pass with the first 20 tiers automatically unlocked. Look at that, a whole YouTube video in like 40 seconds. Good job, Donuts. So, is this a consumer-friendly model? Is this good? Is this bad? Is this evil? Is this going to work out for the consumers? Well, it very well could, but I will remind everybody, this is kind of exactly how Black Ops 4 started, and we all saw how that turned out. But before we get to that, let's talk about the actual system first. Um, the main things that everybody's worried about is the weapons. The weapons of Modern Warfare are really the biggest players here. It's the biggest re play value so these weapons are very very valuable to the, to the community they always are and they always will be and luckily they are within the first third of the battle pass system there's 100 tiers the second weapon is at tier 31 so in that aspect it is a really nice change of pace to have those weapons unlocked pretty early on relatively speaking so that is fantastic and the battle pass is only ten dollars but the big thing about that is if you buy the battle pass and you go all the way to rank 100 or tier 100, you get 1300 COD points in total, which pays the $10 that you spent for the battle pass. Now, obviously it's in COD points, so how valuable are they? But in theory, the next season, if the battle pass is $10, you will be able to pay your COD points with, you'll be able to pay that battle pass with your COD points that you've earned with this battle pass. So yeah, it's a pretty darn good model. In terms of tiers, this is a little weird. I saw numerous Reddit posts talking about how slow these tiers are progressing. However, from personal experience, they're not really that bad at all. Like I've already prog progressed like maybe four or five tiers. I've only played for maybe two or three hours and that's really not so bad. I think Prestigious Key said that each tier is about like a half hour to 45 minutes, and honestly, that's better than it was in Black Ops 4. However, it is worth noting that Infinity Ward has a wonderful daily challenge system, which I'll make a video about um, at some point in time, but it would be so perfect, just ever so perfect, to put in a little tier skip within any one of those daily challenges. And a lot of people, once they hit the max rank of 155, they're gonna want some other thing to do these challenges for, and the battle pass, a tier skip, is gonna be the perfect thing for that, so that's gonna be my first suggestion here. It's not 100% necessary, because like I said, it's not really grueling to get through these tiers, at least in my opinion, but um, that would be a nice little addition in Infinity Ward, so you know what, hey, there's a, a suggestion for ya. Adding to the good qualities here, if you purchase the premium battle pass, you get instant access to the Holter 26, which is one of the new LMGs, and that's fantastic. You feel immediately rewarded for purchasing the premium battle pass, and that is a really good design, so that's fantastic. Plus, you're that much closer to the next weapon, so it's even better. And $20 is pretty reasonable, honestly. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this system as it is currently. However, that's the big question. Currently, is it gonna stay that way? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. We saw how Black Ops 4 turned out and it wasn't pretty. And the question, it comes down to this question. What about the people who don't own the game right now? What about the people who purchased this game in December? Or I guess it is December. Wow, it's already December. On Christmas, in January, in February. What about the people who purchased this game two, three years from now in order to see what this game was actually like? How are they going to be able to unlock these DLC weapons? What's the system that's going to be in place for it? In my opinion, I think this would work so wonderfully with the missions. They've added new missions with Season 1, and it would be perfect if Season 1 ended and they added missions with these new DLC weapons. So you just completed these challenges in order to get these weapons. It's complete within the player's skill. It's free for everybody if they're willing to put in the time and the skill in order to complete these challenges. However, is that the way they're going to go? Is that the best way to make money? Who knows? 
because they could really go the Black Ops 4 route and add loot boxes into the game and say that's exactly how you need to earn the weapons there. And if that happens, I would be very interested to see the community reaction from that because I feel like some somebody would burn down a building somewhere. I know that because there would be a riot if that happened again. But that's just speculation, and we can't talk about that. The only thing that, well, I like to talk about is the present, and presently, it's a really darn good system. It's a really nice system, and if you're asking me, I really like the aesthetic of Modern Warfare. I truly do. The attention to detail, the atmosphere, the immersion that they have, the watches, the calling cards, and I just love it so much more than whatever Black Ops 4 is trying to do. Like, that under the Call of Duty title, it just, Black Ops 4 was just so gross to me with all of the neon everything and the silly costumes and Advanced Warfare 2, so it is so refreshing to have a battle pass with cosmetics that I actually enjoy, that I actually am interested in, that feel grounded in reality, that are interesting to use. It reminds me a lot of World War II. I know a lot of people say World War II got a little bit out there, but even still, it was much more grounded than like Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4, Advanced Warfare, and uh, Infinite Warfare, of course. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on the Battle Pass. Tell me your guys' thoughts. We've got a couple days to get to know it and to kind of experiment with it and have fun with it, I guess, if that's what you want to do with this game. I'm certainly not. But um, anyway, tell me your guys' thoughts about the Battle Pass system in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next absolutely beautiful Marvel for Morning. I'll catch up with you guys later. And as always... Stay beautiful.